Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Students in today's lecture we will discuss in pinus about the female gametophyte which is also known as endosperm then structure and development of archegonium and pollination and fertilization in last lecture at the end we discussed that in the reduction division of megaspore mother cell four haploid megaspores are formed three are disintegrated and only one functional megaspore survives from this functional megaspore female gametophyte is produced in by germination in the megaspore how germination starts in this megaspore first of all the size of the megaspore increases and its nucleus it divides by free nuclear divisions and about 2000 nuclei may be produced and then in the center a large vacuole appears and all the nuclei these are arranged on the peripheral side of the megaspore wall that these are arranged on the outer side of the megaspore and then after this cytoplasm is produced and this cytoplasm it replaces the central vacuole means that instead of a vacuole in the center a watery cytoplasm is present now then after this in these nuclei which are arranged on the peripheral side of the megaspore germinating megaspore wall formation around these nuclei starts and this wall formation it starts from the outer to the center of the megaspores here in this diagram we can see the development of female gametophyte this is oviluferous scale and on this oviluferous scale ovule is produced having nucellus and uh, integument around it and this megaspore is produced towards the micropylar end in the nucellus after reduction division in the uh, megaspore mother cell uh, nucellus is deployed while megaspore which is produced after reduction division it is haploid in this megaspore first of all the size of the megaspore is increased then free nuclear division occurs in this megaspore and about 2000 nuclei are produced and then in the central part of this central vacuole is produced and nuclei are arranged on the peripheral side of this megaspore and then after this uh, a watery cytoplasm is produced in the center of this vacuole and vacuole disappears and then wall formation starts from the peripheral means from the outer side towards the center first of all wall formation occurs in the nuclei around the nuclei which are present near the wall on the outer side and then this wall formation it uh, proceeds towards the center of the uh, mega uh, spore <laughs> and then as a result of this wall formation from the outer side towards the center central part of the mega spore this uh, uh, the central tissue or the mega spore part inner tissue it is now converted into the cellular tissue and then the whole part is converted into a cellular tissue in the next uh, uh, we will see this diagram and the megaspore wall 
it becomes thick which surrounds the gametophyte means that uh, uh, this germinating gametophyte uh, germinating megaspore which produces a cellular tissue uh, the wall of it it becomes thick and the size of the ovule it also increases in uh, size now this is the diagram which we have uh, earlier discussed now we can see <coughs> in the next part where the size of the nucleus uh, size of the uh, 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 um, ovule is increased and the size of the this female gametophyte is also increased by the wall formation and the wall formation which was started from the outer side towards the center this uh, converts the these free nuclei into the cellular tissue because all the nuclei these are now surrounded by the uh, wall and this female gametophyte which is produced which is produced after the germination of the megaspore this is uh, uh, also known as the endosperm or it is also known as the female prothallus and then in this uh, endosperm or the female gametophyte towards the micropylar end of the ovule several cells these become enlarged in size and these these become prominent and they act as the archegonial uh, initials and now next we will see that in this female gametophyte how archegonia are uh, produced and what is the structure of the archegonium each archegonium it consists of a neck and a large venter and the uh, surrounding tissue or the cell which are present around this archegonium of the gametophyte these form the jacket layer around the archegonium and the number of archegonia these are uh, different in different species and this number may range from 1 to 6 that me it means that in some species only one archegonium may be produced and in other uh, two may be produced three may be produced or uh, four or five or six uh, archegonia may also be produced in one gametophyte in one female gametophyte uh, how this archegonium is developed first of all we uh, see the diagram of the mature archegonium this is the uh, neck region of the archegonium and in neck is very small and no neck canal cells are present in the neck region of the archegonium and this is the large ventral part which contains the uh, egg nucleus how the development of the archegonium uh, occurs in the female gametophyte towards the micropylar end several cells of the gametophyte they function as the archegonial initial cells and each archegonial initial it divides by periclinal division to into two cells outer one is known as the outer primary neck cell and the inner one is known as the central inner central cell the primary neck cell it divides by two successive anticlinal divisions and as a result of these anticlinal divisions a plate of four neck cells are produced then these four cells they divide periclinally and eight cells are produced in the neck region and these cells eight cells are arranged in two tiers mean four on the upper uh, part and four on the lower uh, tire the neck canal cells these are absent and the nucleus of the central cell it enlarges and migrate near the neck region it divides unequally to form 
a small ventral canal cell and a large egg cell. The ventral canal cell disintegrates and the egg nucleus it migrates towards the center. We can see here the diagrams of the development of archegonium. This is one archegonial initial cell. Likewise, uh, uh, similar many uh, several cells may act as the archegonial initial towards the micropylar end in the female gametophyte. And this cell it enlarges in size, archegonial initial cell, and then this archegonial initial cell it divides into two cells outer one at uh, the uh, primary neck cell and the inner one central cell primary neck cell it divides by anticlinal divisions two and four uh, cells are produced two are in front and two on its back side four and then periclinal division occurs in these four cells and as a result of this eight uh, neck cells are uh, produced here in diagram only um, uh, two are uh, visible like in niche wale jo uh, cells hain wo yahan par show nahi hue hain to four neck canal four neck cells are uh, produced and the nucleus of the central cell it migrates towards the upper region and then this divides unequally to produce the smaller ventral canal cell and the large egg uh, nucleus. This ventral canal cell it disintegrates and the egg of the venter it also uh, shifts or moves toward the upper region or center part of the archegonium and in this way uh, uh, one to six archegonia may be developed in different uh, species. Uh, this is the diagram uh, which we have discussed uh, earlier uh, the development of the archegonium and then this is the diagram which shows the mature uh, ovule and in this ovule this is the female gametophyte prothallus female female gametophyte or it's also known as the endosperm and then in the upper part of this towards the micropylar end uh, here two archegonia are present means k2 archegonial initials are developed in this and as a result of this two archegonia are uh, produced and then towards the micropylar end uh, this is the uh, uh, nucellus tissue. This is nucellus tissue in which the female gametophyte is produced, prothallus female and or endosperm. And in this endosperm, female gametophyte uh, archegonia are uh, produced. And then on the upper side of this, in the uh, female gametophyte, uh, pollen chamber is present in which the pollen grains will be uh, lodged after pollination. This is the micropylar uh, region. Now we uh, see how pollination occurs in pinus. When in the male cones pollen grains are formed, these pollen grains these are carried to the female cone by wind. Mean pollination in the pinus it occurs through wind. And meanwhile, in the female cone, the oviliparous scales, they become separated from each other by the elongation of the central axis of the female cone. And the pollen grains, these can easily uh, enter or uh, shift down between the scales. And then these uh, reach in the micropylar canal of the ovule. And then... In this micropylar region, in this micropylar part, pollination drop is present, it is produced and these pollen grains when fall on the micropylar part, they are attached to this pollination drop and then uh, this drop dries and after drying this pollination uh, drop, the pollen grains, these are drawn into the, these enter into the uh, pollen chamber where the development of the female gametophyte is uh, 
completed in these diagrams uh, we can see the process of uh, uh, pollination uh, this is the sporophyte uh, plant on which the female cones are produced and male cones are produced uh, in the <coughs> male cones uh, these are pollen grains which are produced in the microsporangium and in the female cones on the oviliferous scales uh, two ovules here are present and these two in these two ovules are megasporangia this is the diagram of the ovule which is present on the oviliferous scale and this integument uh, uh, is uh, present around this ovule and in the center uh, of the ovule the female gametophyte is uh, present and when these micro uh, spore pollen grains uh, when are formed from the germination of the microspore in the microsporangium these are carried these um, uh, microsporangium uh, which contains the pollen grains when these pollen grains these are shed these are released from the microsporangium at the four cell stage and then through the wind they uh, reach they fall on the uh, female uh, cone and then uh, when the oviliferous scale these are separated from each other in the cone central axis elongates and oviliferous scales are separated from each other and these pollen grain they can easily enter and reach to the uh, this uh, micropylar end of the ovule on the oviliferous uh, scales micro uh, uh, spores or pollen grain germinated microspores which are all known as the pollen grains these are produced in large numbers in the male cones when these become mature and then these are produced in the form of small in the form of powdery mass in large number which are uh, which can be seen in this diagram and then when the pollen grains they reach to the female gametophyte when they uh, uh, fall on the micropylar end of the ovule then the development of the pollen grain further development of the pollen grain occurs here and then in this uh, pollen grains pollen tube is uh, uh, produced and this pollen tube it grows actively through the nucellus and the tip of the pollen tube it forcibly enters through the pollen chamber into the next cell of the archegonium and this pollen tube it contains the uh, sperm cells which are formed by the uh, uh, germination of the uh, further uh, pollen grain uh, development and then this pollen tube which enters in the next cell through the next cell of the archegonium the tip of the pollen tube ruptures and it releases the sperm cells in the archegonium and the larger sperm it unites with the egg to form the diploid zygote gametophyte stage is for short time in the uh, uh, gymnosperms in the spore uh, pinus also and here again after fertilization the end of the gametophyte stage and it is the start or beginning of the sporophytic uh, phase here this diagram is showing the process of fertilization in this oviliferous scale uh, the ovule is present in this ovule the megaspore uh, it produces the female uh, gametophyte and in this female gametophyte archegonia are present and the pollen grain which falls which enters into this <coughs> micropylar end into the ovule it produces the pollen grain 
uh, pollen tube and in this pollen tube uh, we uh, discussed uh, in the last lecture that in this pollen tube tube nucleus is present and then two male gametes are present and then this pollen tube after entering to the micropylar end through the nucellus tissue it enters into the pollen chamber in the female gametophyte and then it enters in the archegonium which is produced in the female gametophyte and one of the sperm it unites with the egg to produce the diploid cell which is known as zygote diploid zygote is uh, produced and then this diploid zygote uh, some changes occur in this ovule and these ovules are converted into the uh, seeds which after germination will produce the sporophyte plant body so students in today's lecture we uh, discuss the uh, female gametophyte and structure and development of the archegonium and the process of pollination and uh, fertilization in the next lecture inshallah we will discuss the germination of the zygote and development of the embryo